The following is a World Class Bullshit is exclusive. Hey folks, welcome back to WCBS, where today we're going to be looking at the Star Wars Acolyte trailer. I know, you can see the excitement in my face. But before we get into that trailer, hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you enjoy this content, and share us everywhere that you go. So now folks, the Star Wars Disney series on... Disney Plus, haven't been very good. They've been uh, solid with The Mandalorian, and they've fallen off very quickly. So today, we're going to look at The Acolyte, and, well, who knows what we're going to get here. This is the Star Wars series produced by Leslie Headland, and it takes place during the High Republic era. You know, the Star Wars without the war they've been talking about. So we're going to hit that play button, and we're going to look at it live, and then we're going to talk about what we see. So folks, get your timestamp set up and hit play right now. I'll close my eyes if you don't do anything better than this. Okay. We're on Coruscant and the Jedi Temple. Okay. I see Trinity from the Matrix as a Jedi. This looks like cosplay. <laughs> um, in an age of light, darkness has risen. This is about power and who's allowed to use it. Oh my god, the two episode premiere is June 4th. I can't wait. Disney Plus only. Uh, let's talk about that one. This is the result of a filmmaker who's only seen The Matrix or who grew up on The Matrix or whatever. I don't know how old Leslie Hedlund is. I don't know how old everyone involved with this is. But I know Carrie Ann Moss is there. And it feels a lot like The Matrix. It, it's kind of hokey. Like... Star Wars had an edge to it. There was some grit to it. It was space western. It wasn't people hanging out, talking for seven hours in front of green screens. Like, the old Star Wars movies had some teeth to them. Even the prequels, when they went outside, they had some teeth to them. This looks kind of stoic and boring and kind of laugh-out-loud funny. I mean, the High Republic era is not well-received anyway by people. Uh, the first book did well, then they've fallen off a cliff, so... Overall, High Republic, not really a big win for Disney. And so this TV show is going to follow Ahsoka, because that was our last one that we sat through. And like all of these shows that come before them, they come, they go. We don't really think about them positively. And then we find out they don't get a second or third season, and we're never upset. So hopefully, um, we're all wrong with this one. Because based on this little bit of information, this trailer, what do you expect? This is not really exciting or very good. Now, if I remove any issues I've had with previous Star Wars films and taking it back to the beginning of the Disney era, I still wouldn't be that impressed with this thing. It's just, it's too many lightsabers. It's, it's like, Star Wars is more than Jedi Force fantasy fulfillment. It has many layers, and that's why it works. You might like the Jedi story. You might like the Imperial story. You might like the War story. You might like the Sith story. It's all in Star Wars. This is just Jedi stuff. And while the Jedi are cool, there needs to be balance. And really, I don't want to watch a bunch of Jedi standing around talking for hours about virtue and power of the Force. Like, are they going to take modern politics and lump them into Jedi virtue? Probably, because that's all this entertainment is today, folks. It's never anything unique and original. It's let's take something that exists and break it. And fill it full of other bullshit and tape it back together. That's what I'm expecting with the Acolyte. Why should I expect anything else? I've lived through enough Star Wars from Disney, a.k.a. all of it, to realize what a big disappointment it is. So, 
I, you know, I didn't have any real big positive takeaways. The tone made me laugh. Carrie Ann Moss is a good actress, but okay. It, it, it's, it's weird because she really only has one iconic role. And then she went back to play it two other times and came back to play it decades later. And so it's kind of like if you just put... I'm trying to think of another actor because Keanu Reeves has Neo and John Wick and other roles like Johnny Utah. Carrie Ann Moss, it just feels like they've plucked a character from the Matrix and then the rest of the cast, it's like, we got our Asian Jedi, our Black Jedi, our ethnically nondescript Jedi. It feels like a council of people sat around and decided what this show needed to make all sure the boxes were checked. And I don't like that. I, I'm i supposed to feel enlightened or represented or whatever, and I just feel like it's eye-rolling moment because it's very obvious. I'm not looking for this stuff. I'm not going and going, ooh, let me see where the diversity is and those evil SJWs. No, I... If you're watching something and you're going, wow, they really are on the nose with this. It's like a Benetton ad or one of those early 90s reality shows where it's like, okay, they are really, really trying for something here. We get it. We got it. Hopefully it's good. That's all that I care about with Star Wars. If the quality of the product is good, I don't care if there's 90 women or nine women or no women. If it's good, it's good. You know, I just, I have very little faith in this. Um, you know, the High Republic is such a weird era to want to adapt. It's like Disney keeps taking everything that we don't really like and they keep stretching it out. It's like, you guys really, really, really did not like The Rise of Skywalker and all those movies, but we're going to give you episode 10. And now this information comes out where Disney says they've amassed $12, $12 billion in value. They didn't say how much money they made. Their statement was they have amassed $12 billion in value from Lucasfilm. Okay, but we know that those movies are not successful. They own all of Lucasfilm. So all the old Star Wars merchandise and all the other stuff that moves and sells. Though they're very vague about this. But we do have numbers for, our, for these shows on Disney Plus, and we know they're exorbitantly expensive. Disney needs to make money. Um, I guess they'll use that $12 billion in valuation to always justify more of these projects. So no matter what we all think of the Acolyte, be prepared for more of this shit. That's what the future of Star Wars is, because they make money from other heirs of it to justify this crap. But I do pose the question... If Star Wars was so profitable, why did the hotel close in under a year? You don't have an answer. So there's fudging numbers somewhere. I'm not an analyst. I'm not an expert. But if I'm seeing through this shit, well, everybody should. Even though I'm world class, but that's a story for another time. But... You know, we'll get more of the Acolyte. We'll get more into this stuff the closer we get to the release. What is it, June? It's coming out. It's March now. So we're here in the first 33 minutes of this trailer. And it's jumped quite a bit. When I clicked on it, it was like 69,000. Now it's at 230,000. I can't see the thumbs up to thumbs down ratio, but it's got 25,000 thumbs up. So overall, I guess people are liking this trailer. They're happy with it. Or it's just non-offensive. Like, I'm going to put it on in the background while we finish this video. But, I mean... The CGI, the costuming, it looks, you know, when it's not on the other people, it looks fine. But on the main Jedi, it just looks like a lot of cosplay. And I guess maybe that should be a compliment to modern day cosplayers that you look like you're out of a Disney Plus series. But, you know, the CGI stuff looks fine. The location shooting looks cool. We got to see it on the big screen because some of these shows like Book of Boba Fett and Andor and other ones, they do have nice looking moments. And then sometimes you have really bad moments. So, uh... You know, a beautiful picture needs a little more substance when it comes to the art of filmmaking. And I I don't want to keep harping on Carrie Ann Moss, but it just makes me laugh way too much. And the, the fighting style, like, why is it Jedi John Wick? With the, the quick fight, it's like Matt Bourne. Just do something else. The Jedi aren't this coverall for everything. But you know what? I'm going to leave my rant alone. I'm looking at this Wookiee. I'm looking at these actors prepare for cosplay the animated series coming to disney plus in just a few months so folks thank you for watching we'll be back with more if you want some good star wars related content well you know what you do you go you get a copy of stealing solo a captain's parody 
by me, written and drawn. It features these four guys. They kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement. It's a big, full-color book with beautiful illustrations, and it's a lot of fun. People call it Laugh Out Loud Funny and the best Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. So get yourselves a copy of Stealing Solo. The link is in the description below. But, folks, if you want the greatest comic book event of 2024, be on the lookout for Wokebusters. It's huge. It's massive. It's a lot of pages. It's a lot of laughs. And it's almost, almost, almost here. I'll be releasing a poster this week to coincide with the movie. We'll be back to talk about more Ghostbusters stuff, including a review of Frozen Empire on Thursday night. It will be a spoiler-free review. So do not worry, folks. Do not worry that Ghostbusters is going to be spoiled on our podcast. Moving forward, we're making sure we don't spoil anything for you guys so you can join in with us, have fun, and then go see the films or TV shows for yourself. We were always trying to save you a couple bucks because, you know... Why waste your money on crap? But we'll let you decide for yourself because it's power to the people and all that other fun stuff. So, folks, thank you for watching. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. Stealing Solo asks the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? That and a whole lot more is answered in Stealing Solo, a Captain's Parody. Stealing Soul has been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs, and it's available now for a limited time only. Go to StealingSolo.com, which is powered by Shopify, so you get the reward-winning safety and security, and get yourselves a copy today. Once we sell through this limited backstock, I'm going back to the drawing board to bring you the sequel, which parodies Luke Skywalker's Fall from Grace, and finally the closing chapter, which I can't wait to get to, Frankenfisher, The Bride of Solo, and yes, it's exactly what you think it is. So folks, the only way to get that is go to StealingSolo.com right now, get yourselves a copy, and enjoy the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs.